All right, guys, so quick recap. Uh, the tractor back there has uh, four slow leakers. All four tires will go flat if you leave it for long enough. Uh, it leaks hydraulic fluid from both front cylinders. Uh, it, it smokes like a freight train. Uh, it's an unbelievable amount of smoke. Uh, it has so much blow-by that if you give it enough throttle and work it, it'll actually push the dipstick tube out of the case. Never seen that before. I'm also pretty sure that it's actually pushing blow-by through the front main seal because it comes out of the front like accessory drive area. That's also a first for me. Uh, let's see, it also leaks hydraulic fluid out of the bottom of the tank, which is in the frame, so it's almost impossible to fix that one. I feel like I'm missing something. Oh yeah, when it warms up, the oil gets thin enough that it leaks like the deep water horizon through the 14 inch crack in the oil pan. Nothing some JB Weld can't fix. Other than all that, it's mint. What's up guys, welcome back to Ranwin Parked. This is going to be part two of the will it start video on my 70 whatever Massey Ferguson MF50A industrial backhoe behind me. So will it start again or something like that? So you guys all saw the first one, I assume, where I got it running up on the mountain up in Vermont. Uh, I didn't ever really move it. Uh, I've now gotten it home and uh, it's a pretty much a dumpster fire. It is nothing but problems. There's all kinds of things wrong with it. Now any sane man, would probably give up on it and go and buy something that has slightly less problems, maybe newer, and uh, just get the work done they need. But I'm a glutton for punishment, so I'm going to stick with this thing, and I'm going to save it, and uh, it's going to be terrible, probably. So uh, let's get into it, and I'll start showing you one some of the variety of problems with this thing. All right, guys, so let me start by setting the scene for you a little bit. So this thing, I successfully moved it off the mountain. I didn't get that on camera, but uh, I did move it, and, and it was in a more conducive spot to getting it out of there on a trailer. So I hired a guy. I had him go up to Vermont. He was going to pick this thing up. He was going to bring it down to my house in Connecticut, fire it up on one end, put it on the trailer, unload it here. No problem. Everything should be really easy until the day of came. So I wasn't there, I had to work. So I had my dad and my uncle up on the Vermont end and they were gonna get it running, get it on the trailer and then chase the guy down here to Connecticut to my house. Because theoretically speaking, I would still be at work because we're only talking about a few hours elapsed here and then uh, unload it here and then they would just take off. But uh, that morning it was like 18 degrees in Vermont. So long story short, my dad and my uncle spent like five hours <laughs> trying to get this thing running again. Uh, the road that they needed to the guy with the trailer needed to come up was completely a sheet of ice So he couldn't get up. So he parked at the bottom of the road. We were gonna bring the tractor down the road to meet him uh, But it wouldn't start obviously so they spent five hours working on it the dude that was gonna move it Fortunately, he was wicked nice. What a good guy uh, He spent two hours with my dad and my uncle trying to get it started and right when they were about to give up They decide all right, you know what? We'll throw another battery in it And we'll give it a go and it fired and they let it warm up and stuff but uh, that's not the end of the journey. So they went to give it a little bit of throttle. These things have like locking throttles so you can just set it and forget it. And uh, the throttle cable broke. So it's supposed to come out and then you just lock it so you can set it for hydros and stuff so you can actually move the machine. And it just came out. So that was the first problem. So what they ended up doing was they just put a vice grip on the pump down here. So it's right there and essentially they just set it in the right spot to hit the stop up there and it just acts as like a cam to give it enough throttle to actually do something. So they got it down the road and on the trailer doing that, right? So uh, they chased the guy down to Connecticut. By this time it's late, like it's dark by the time they got here. So I left work and after a normal day, I came home, I met them at the house down here in Connecticut. and. Uh, when I got home, they were down the street from my house in like a safe place to unload. And they had the honey badger over there. They were trying to jump start the thing and uh, it wouldn't start. And it was turning over really slow. Uh, so I, you know, parked my car. I walked down the street to, to go and help them. And uh, we farted with it for probably another 45 minutes or an hour to get it running on the trailer again after, mind you, it had just run and warmed up about two and a half hours before that. So, uh, 
We got it running, we got it off the trailer, we got it up here. The bottom line is it took like eight hours, all told, to get the thing from Vermont to here. It was nothing but problems. Uh, it cost me a fair amount of money in the wasted time, but uh, it's here. So I still have work to do with it. Like I said in the intro, you know, uh, any sane man would probably just go and buy a decent machine. I could do that, but I kind of want to. I kind of want to save it now. You know, I'm kind of having fun with it. It's a cool machine, and I think uh, it could be good. It's just a basket of problems right now. So let's go through some of those problems. So today, I'm going to try to get it running and get it out of here so I can do some work because it's actually kind of a nice day today. So we're going to put a new throttle cable on it. The other thing that happened the morning that they tried to move it is. It's got a block heater down here. Maybe you can't see it. It's in there. It's actually not a block heater. It's an inline coolant heater. So it's in line with the lower radiator hose. That melted. So you can't heat, you know, heat up the, the block at all. And from jump starting it, the positive terminal on the starter has essentially melted off. There's really not much left to it. Uh, it moves and shakes and stuff. So I think the starter's trashed. Probably trashed. I mean kind of burned itself to bits, but we're gonna try to get it running like that anyway and move this thing around. Uh, now, the other thing I wanna cover on this real quick before we get moving is that I had a ton of comments uh, about what might be wrong with this machine on the last video. A lot of people saying, uh, you know, I said there's blow-by in the video. And then I failed to show that blow-by. All I showed was that it was smoking out of the exhaust stack. And yes, guys, I get it. Smoke out of the exhaust stack is not blow-by, right? It could be an oil seal on the valve, the valve seal, as some of you guys pointed out. It could be a stuck injector, as some of you guys pointed out. But I just want to show you what I meant by the blow-by. Now, it's not running, so I can't really show you the blow-by exactly. Hopefully I will later if we're successful. But allow me to show you Exhibit A. Generally speaking, if you buy a machine and the previous owner of the machine had to plumb the crankcase vent out, down, and around, under the machine, behind the driver, it's probably because it has so much blow-by that the smoke will blind you or poison you and you cannot drive the machine because it's coming out right in your face. So let that be a lesson to you guys. If you see something like that, probably a lot of blow-by. And sure enough, I have driven the machine. It has a lot of blow-by, but I will show you that later. So uh, let's get into it. Throw a throttle cable on it and see if we can get this thing moving. All right, so we have throttle cable here. It's not quite put together right because the nut on the back side doesn't fit through the factory bracket, so it's just kind of hobbled in there, but whatever. So anyway, you pull it out, set it where you want it, turn it 90 degrees, it locks there. That's how these things have to kind of be utilized. So that works perfect. So I guess now I'm gonna try to start this thing up. Um, I don't think it's gonna start, but we're gonna give it a shot uh, before I do a starter and some other stuff to it because why not? Maybe we can get some work done today. If I'm a betting man though, I'm gonna say it turns over very slowly and does not start, but we'll see.
Okay guys, so basically it wants to go. I mean, maybe if I give it a little more gas, I could I could possibly get it, but this starter is just trashed. I mean, I don't know if you guys can really tell. I don't even want to touch it right now because it's so hot. This thing's just drawing a million amps. And when that happens, there's a dead short in there somewhere. But here you can probably see, look at that thing moving back and forth. I mean, it has just torched itself by drawing so many amps. I mean, I have my gigantic jumper pack in here. This thing turns out like 1400 cold cranking amps and it still won't turn over fast. So I'm gonna call it just cause it's kinda sketchy to even get in there and try to start it. And it's arcing all over the place. And it, when you, it pulls so many amps when you put a screwdriver in there or the pry bar I'm using right now, it'll, it'll weld itself to the starter and you gotta yank it back out of there. So it's sketchy to say the least. So I'm gonna get a starter. I'm gonna get a, a block heater for the other side. I'm gonna replace those things and then uh, we'll give this thing another go. All right guys, so it's about a week later now. Obviously the weather has changed a little bit as opposed to last time I was working on this thing. Now here's the deal. The starter that's in that thing that's completely shot is uh, like a Chinese crappy replacement starter that my uncle put on it like 15 years ago or, or longer, right about the time he parked it. So I looked around for a new starter and I found two options either more crappy Chinese replacement starters for like 150 bucks or an original Delco piece for 400 bucks. So what I did was, as it turns out, my uncle had the original starter hanging around up in Vermont still. So I drove up there, I grabbed the original starter, I brought it back down here and I had it rebuilt. It's right here. So what we're going to do is we're gonna throw this new starter on it or rebuilt starter back on it. Uh, I'm gonna put the intake elbow back on it because it was off of it, I just found it. Uh, we're gonna change the terminal on the signal wire from the solenoid. Gonna put the battery back in it because it's charging up. And uh, we'll see if we can get it running, I guess. See if she'll come to life for us. First things first, I gotta shovel out a little area to work. It's like uh, 30 degrees out today, which isn't so bad, but it's still freezing cold. I'm doing this for you, YouTube. All right, so she's all hooked up, batteries in, ignition switch, finally works again. Okay, so we have ignition. Uh, let's see if we can get her fired. All right, for a little bit of gas here and see what we got. Nothing yet. You know what? I'm going to make this a little easier and just throw the jumper pack on it right now. All right, so jumper pack is on just to give it some extra amps because it is cold. Starting fluid is in hand just in case. So let's see if we can get her going now.
All right, guys, so the old Massey Ferguson's running and moving pretty good. Everything's right in the world. It took it a while to warm up before it would actually move, but all heavy equipment's like that when it's this cold. It actually goes surprisingly good in the snow for a two-wheel drive backhoe. Now, it has a diff lock, but I didn't even have to use it, so let's talk about what's wrong with this thing. So you can see here, it's smoking pretty good. I mean, it's not so bad, and it's a cold day, so I don't really know how bad that really is, but it does smoke. That might be like a stuck injector or maybe a valve seal leak or something like that. Now, I mentioned blow-by in the last video, and I got so many comments from people saying that's not blow-by, blah, blah, blah. Let me tell you what I was talking about with that. Now, I think I mentioned that the uh, crankcase vent is plumbed behind the driver just so the blow-by doesn't come out in your face. Let me show you that. So basically all that smoke is blow-by directly. Now, that's not all of it. Although this crankcase is open to atmosphere, it even has enough pressure to blow out of the dipstick tube. So I don't know if you guys can see that, but let me give it a little more gas just to make sure. So yeah, it's got a fair amount of blow-by, guys. It runs good, it idles good, it even idles really low for something that has that much blow-by, but it's a lot. And when you really start working this thing, you start working the hydraulics and things, it gets worse, obviously with load, like it always does in situations like that. So generally speaking, I'm happy with the thing. I think we got it pretty well sorted out. It needs some hoses and things like that, but uh, it's a worker and I got a lot of work to do. So that's about it for today's video, guys. I got a lot of work to do with this thing. I gotta go and move some of this snow because the banks are so big, it's kind of in the way of my driveway. I gotta make it a little more useful. So do me a favor, hit that like button, leave me a comment, tell me what you're thinking, and don't forget to go subscribe because I got a ton of stuff coming up behind this. I'll see you guys next time on Ran One Parked.